He sets up the party and they have, Naboth comes in, probably thinking, cool. I just got the victory. I resisted selling my inheritance and now I'm going to be honored. Be careful when you get the victory over evil. It's not done attacking you. In fact, it will just take a new tactic and address you in a new way. It'll throw a party for you. It'll place you at the head of the table. It'll make you think you're being rewarded for your good position and your stance on the things that are godly. Watch the tactics and the deceptions of the enemy. He sits at the table. And she, Jezebel, had hired two worthless men, it says who are going to come and falsely accuse him and lie about him, saying that he cursed God and the king. And Naboth is sitting at the head of the table and they're having this fast and he's being honored and all of a sudden these two men say, hey, he shouldn't be at the front of the table. That man, we heard him cursing God and the king. And all the people said, what? And they took him out and stoned him and murdered him. <coughs> that tells me Satan knows he cannot steal your inheritance while you're alive. He can't steal the prophetic word in you while you're still in giving life to it. Oh, hear me. Don't give up on what God has promised you and the vision He's given you. Don't let it die. Don't let the inheritance of God in you die. If you've been given a prophetic word, hold on to it. If you've been called two hammers and one hammer, hold on to it. Don't let Satan, the moment that prophetic word in you dies, Ahab owns your field. Come on. The moment the word of the Lord that's in you and the vision and the promise in you dies, Ahab owns the field. He gets it. He doesn't get it as long as there's still life in you. It's still yours. Come on. He can't own your children as long as you keep on speaking words of life over your children. Come on. He can't have your inheritance as long as there's still life in you declaring that it's mine. Thus saith the Lord and as long as you're speaking life, it's still yours. That's right. Today's LG. BT movement is using wicked and evil practices and lies against the people of God to lure people in, to make Christians look evil, intolerant. They're calling us haters. I hope believers everywhere are taking this battle head on. Not shying away from it. You don't have to be their friend to speak the truth to them. You don't have to love them into the kingdom of God. Do you know there are some people you will never love into the kingdom of God? But they will only come by hearing the truth. Yes. It's the truth that sets them free, not the love of God that sets them free. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Yes. We're trying to love sinners in and, and be compassionate and be in pansy with them. And they're thinking that we're saying their sin's okay. I'm all for loving the homosexual, but boy, you better follow before and after that love with the truth of God's word. That's right. Yes. They pervert that. She even, Jezebel, reverts to murder to get what she wants by using the fast. Listen, I want to say this. Not every revival is going to be of God in the last days. That's right. Not every Christian book that's written is going to come out of the throne room of God. Amen. Not every movie that's about God is going to be from God. <laughs> Not every big church is going to be a godly church. In the end, David dies for what he believed in. It cost him his life. It says in the book of Revelation, the warning to the churches, that we are to resist the practice of the Nicolaitans. We are to not get caught up in the ways of the world. And like my faithful servant Antipas, remember? It says he even died for what he believed in. Amen. That's what we're called for in these last days. Stay alive in your vision, your dreams, the prophetic word that God has given you. Don't let Satan steal it. Keep it alive at your inheritance. Speak life over your family, over your town. Amen. People who speak negative over this community, they disgust me. People who say this town will never change, that offends me. Because I believe that God is big enough to change anybody. Yes, he is. Whether they're seeking him or not, Saul of Tarsus was not running after Jesus. He was running after Christians to kill him, and God saved him anyways. This town don't have to be looking for Jesus. Come on. They don't have to be seeking him. He's seeking them. Come on, he's running after them. He wants them. I don't know about you, but I didn't get saved looking for Jesus. I was just going through my life and Jesus interrupted it. And I have been on interruption mode ever since. Yeah. Paul in the New Testament says this. I shared this text with Jason a couple weeks ago. 
He says this is how he describes you. You're an athlete, and you're running a race, and you're fighting a fight. Amen? I run towards the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We run a race. He says we are fighting the good fight of faith. It, it portrayed like a, a boxing match. You don't win the ultimate prize by winning the last and final battle. Let me say this again. You don't win the Super Bowl by winning the Super Bowl. Because you can't even win the Super Bowl if you don't first get to it. The battle isn't really the last game. The battle are all of the games leading up to get you into it. Yes. So you have to walk with your integrity and your character right now. A lot of people have this mindset that I will change. I'll turn to God one day. How many of you have heard people, you know, I'll give my heart to Jesus one day. But I'm just not sure right now because the church is just so full of hypocrites and all they want is your money. And all the preachers are crooked. How many of you have heard that? Come on. The battles that you win today are the ones that put you into the final match that qualify you for the prize. Your victory comes by maintaining your inheritance, standing every day for truth, not wavering in your beliefs. In verse 18 of that chapter that we read, it says, after Naboth was killed, and it is told to Elijah that Ahab, the king of Samaria, he's in the vineyard of Naboth. Now you read that and you just kind of look over it. Okay, Ahab won. Jezebel helped him murder this innocent guy. He takes the field that's now his. The Bible doesn't call the field Ahab's. It says he's in the vineyard of Naboth. He still owns it. Even though he is dead because he didn't sell his inheritance, he still owns it and occupies it in the eyes of God. Come on. Are you hearing me? He died defending the character and the integrity of the inheritance he received from his fathers. And yet even when he died and Ahab goes in to occupy it, it's still in God's word described as the vineyard of Naboth. It isn't even called the vineyard of Ahab anymore. It's called, still called Naboth. It's still his. You will not lose what you stand up for if you continue to defend it and stand for it. Even if Satan comes in and occupies the land. Even if Satan takes your children. Even if he tries to get them to come in suicide, even if he leads them into drugs or one sexual perverted relationship after another, as long as you stand where you stand, Satan will not own them because they're an inheritance of God given to you. But you've got to stand on it and keep life in that. Because it isn't until life is out of that that the enemy comes in to occupy. Don't back down from being godly. Evil's not going to have this country. You really think so? Satan is not going to own the United States of America. Not as long as there is you and me in this land. Yes. And there are many, yes. many whom God has hidden out in the caves called churches. Yes. <laughs> who are not selling their soul to the devil. Who are not compromising the truth to build big ministries. There are many people who are keeping the inheritance of their character and their integrity alive. I'm believing this latest evil ruling from the Supreme Court is going to actually backfire on them. Oh, yes, what this nation thought they wanted is going to give them something that they're going to realize they don't want and they're going to look for help. And it's obviously not going to come from the Supreme Court. It's not going to come from the president. I, I want to tell you, I don't, you don't ever hear me bash Obama, but I can't stand that man. And I'll tell you why. He, after that victory, he put on the White House the, the, the rainbow colors. I want to tell you something. He's supposed to represent me as well as others. He's supposed to be a president of the states of America. He's a president of the Democratic Party and those who believe his agenda. He does not represent me. And that bothers me. He is not a, he's no longer my president. I used to I used to have to calm Connie down because she was just tearing him up. And I'd have to tell you, you know what, honey? He's our president. He's not perfect. He makes a lot of mistakes. He stands for him. But when he did that, he was declaring to all the Republicans, all the libertarians, all the peace. Tea Party people, all the Christians, that I am not your president. And then he has the gall at the funeral to sing Amazing Grace. Did y'all see that? 